Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you and bless your name because you are ready for every one of us. And Lord, I pray that this great anointing, this profitable anointing, this wonder-working anointing, bring upon every one of your servants in Jesus' name. Thank you very much, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Give a good heavenly amen. amen. God bless everyone. Today we're looking at ascending, anointing for the end time harvest. Ascending, anointing. An anointing that starts and goes up and goes higher and higher until it reaches the greatest that you can contain. The greatest that you can have, ascending, anointing for the end time harvest. In Luke chapter 4, reading from verse 18, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Look at that. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Anointing uh, and the Holy Ghost in feeling, uh, they go together. Anointing and Holy Ghost enveloping that he possesses you. You are in him. He is in you and he overflows in your life. Anointing, anytime you think about anointing, you think of the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit because the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has anointed me to preach the gospel. We now know the reason for the anointing. The anointing is to preach the gospel. Preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. We know now the anointing is for the purpose, for the reason of healing, healing the body, healing the mind, healing the soul, healing your spirit, healing your personality. And then it says to preach deliverance to the captives. The anointing is so that we can proclaim deliverance to the captives and we can have the performance of total deliverance for those who are captured, controlled, tormented by the devil and you see the recovering of sight to the blind. That is the reason why we have the anointing. Open their eyes to understand the scriptures. Open their eyes to see the Savior. Open their eyes to experience that transformational power coming from heaven. Open their blind eyes too. And then it says, it is to set at liberty them that are bruised. Many things uh, bruise people in life, coming from Satan, from sickness, from spirit, and uh, from, from, uh, uh, from suffering itself. And it says, all those who are going through life and they are bruised, we come with the anointing, and it is the anointing that sets at liberty, that sets free the people who are in captivity. Verse 19, verse 19 says to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. In verse 20, it tells us that, and uh, he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue, those eyes were fastened on him. Verse 21, and he began to say unto them, this day, somebody shout this day. Yes. Is this scripture fulfilled in your ears? Yes. Uh, you know, we can read from Genesis to Revelation. If what we read is not fulfilled in our hearts, in our ears, in our ministry, reading, reading, reading is all in vain. But when you read the promise of God, when you read the prophecy of God, when you read the proclamation of God, and you can pin it down and say, this day, is this scripture fulfilled in me? 
the anointing will take you to the highest peak of ministry. Yeah. We're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 1. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 20. It says, For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Verse 21. In verse 21, it says, Now he which establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us, anointed us, anointed us, is God. That anointing will come upon your life. Yeah. We're looking at three things here. Number one is the initial anointing. Number two is the increased anointing. Number three is the immeasurable anointing. Number one is the initial anointing from the Savior. You come to the Lord, you turn away from seeing you, and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and he gives you initial anointing from the Savior. Number two, then you come to the Lord, and you have increased anointing. That increased anointing is for service, is for servitude. Initial from the Savior, and then increased anointing, is now for servanthood because he came, he said, I came to serve. And you too, as you have that anointing, you come to serve. Number three, immeasurable anointing for service. Now you are going to service and you are going to touch this and touch this and turn this other thing and your service, serving, you might serve the young, you might serve the old, you might serve as an evangelist, you might serve as, uh, as um, a teacher, you might serve as an apostle, as a prophet or whatever, your area of service as a pastor, you need that immeasurable anointing. Let's come to number one, one by one. One, we're looking at this, it's the initial anointing from the Savior. It says in John chapter 1, reading from verse 12, it says, But as many as received him, as many anywhere, as many as received him, you're in that local congregation, as many as received him, you're in that other denomination, as many as received him, that must take place in our lives if we're going to have that initial anointing for sonship. That will become a real child of God, not because you're in deeper life, not because you're in Chirman and Seraphim, not because you're in Baptist, not because you're in the Assemblies of God, not because of the name of the denomination, but because you made up your mind that it's not the church that saves, it's not the denomination that saves, it is Christ. And he came with salvation, and he says, repent ye and believe the gospel. And you kneel, you bench, I don't mean kneeling physically, in your heart, you surrender to the Lord. In your heart, you give all to the Lord, all to Jesus I surrender, all to him I, I freely give. I will love him all the days of my life. And you are submissive to his calling, you are submissive to the point you are converted, and you are no longer the same as many as received him. To them, he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And then he tells us in Matthew chapter 10, he had called his disciples now. He was bringing them up so that they'll be involved in the work that he came to do and a lot of things have taken place before this, chapter 10 of Matthew, verse 1. I'm going to read. What are those things? Number one, conversion, conversion. And they left everything, and they came to the Lord, and they followed him, conversion, consecration. They were now going one direction, one job, one ministry, one lifestyle, Following after this Christ, 
what called them, they consecrated completely unto him. Submission, submission. They had submitted their lives, their hearts, everything in uh, unto him. Demonstration, demonstration. In demonstration, Jesus healed the sick, chapter 4, they saw it. Chapter 5, 6, 7, he gave them the Sermon on the Mount. Chapter 8, demonstration. He demonstrated the work before them. He cleansed the leper. He healed uh, Simon Peter's mother-in-law. And then they came from everywhere. When the evening was come, they brought all the sick before him, and he spoke the word, and he healed them by the spoken word. And those that were vexed of devils, he healed and set them free. Chapter 9, uh, they brought this man and they went to the roof and they removed the towel. They put, they put him before Jesus. He healed. Demonstration. He demonstrated to them what they will do, what they will be. Delegation. He now is not going to delegate them. Remember? Conversion. Before you can delegate us to go and manifest the anointing, there must be conversion. There must be consecration, total commitment unto the Lord, total submission unto him. You are the Lord of my life, and you control my life. Anything I do, anything I say, anywhere I go, you will be the guide and the leader. It is with that submission you now demonstrated before them, demonstration, and now delegation has come. It will delegate you. Yeah. I said it will delegate you. Yeah. Matthew chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 1. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits. He said, what I have demonstrated, I now delegate into your hand. Amen. Today, he'll delegate it into your hand. Yeah. With greater power, with greater anointing, with greater unction, in Jesus' name. Yeah. And then he gave them power. He gave some clean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. That's the initial anointing they had. And you know, after conversion, then consecration, then submission, then demonstration, then delegation. You see, if you read the whole thing, they came back and they told him what they had done. Supervision, supervision. He supervised the work and they reported back. That's how it happens, that we have the anointing, we go out with demonstration like Christ did because he had delegated unto us, and then we don't run away, we come back. And there is supervision, supervision. After the supervision, there's correction, correction. He says, we should have done this that way. We should have done this that way. Why couldn't we cast out that one? Why couldn't we achieve that one? It is an area of supervision, and now there is correction, correction. Uh, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, he shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, it shall be removed. I said it shall be removed. Yeah. And that's the reason why you'll find after that correction, they went back again and they are now the consummation of the ministry. I don't have silver and gold, but what I have I give unto you in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And the fellow did not rise up immediately, but you know, Peter now had correction, and this is going to be the consummation. He held his son, pulled him up, strength and power came to that body. It will happen in Jesus' name. Amen. Initial anointing will become increased anointing. Yeah. Look, at, look at verse 5. In verse 5, it tells us, it says, uh, These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. <laughs> Why? Because they only had initial anointing. Later, 
after the initial anointing become increased anointing, it will say, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The initial anointing is limited. Later, it will tell them, ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. But now we're dealing with initial anointing. In that initial anointing, go not into the way of the Gentiles or into any city of the Samaritans. Why? Initial anointing. When Philip received that increased anointing, he went to Samaria. And when he got to Samaria and preached Christ unto them, they received and they believed. And then evil spirits were cast out and the sick were healed in Samaria. But at this time now, initial anointing. Go not into any of the city of the Samaritans, enter ye not in. Look at verse 6. In Verse 6, they say, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Uh, that's why Paul the apostle said to the Jew first and then unto the Gentiles. It's not the Jew only and never for the Gentiles. No, we begin with that initial anointing around us. Well, we're known. Well, we know them. We know their culture. We know their language. We know this is your Israel, your Jerusalem. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Verse 7. In verse 7, as she go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Verse 8. In verse 8, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead, cast out devils freely. Ye have received, freely give. Amen. Amen. Uh, look at that. Heal the sick. They went out, they healed the sick. Then cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. That initial anointing, if they exercised that initial anointing, they could have done that. But. Peter, James, John, Matthew, Luke, everyone, they didn't trace the dead. Why? Initial anointing. Now, after increased anointing, after immeasurable anointing, here comes Acts chapter 9, and Dockers had died. What they couldn't do at the time of the initial anointing now, with increased anointing, immeasurable anointing, Peter was able to face that dead Dockers, and she came up alive. Alive. I've not been able to do this. I've not been able to do that. Well, immeasurable anointing will come. It will happen. Let me help you a little. When you will read the word of God, read it. Read it. I went to a particular country, and our overseer there, the Palai, he was to preach a message, and then I was also to preach. And he, he opened to this verse of scripture, and I heard him read Heal the sick. He read that confidently. Cleanse the lepers. Then he read, cast out devils. And he had good eyesight. He saw that next line, raise the dead. He didn't read that one. <laughs> because the congregation might say, ah, pastor, raise the dead. Is that part of your commission? And you have not been doing that. Don't omit any part of scripture. Just because you have only the initial anointing. If you read it, the Lord will increase the anointing upon your life. <laughs> if you read it, when you do not know how, and when you do not know when, it will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. 
In that Matthew chapter 10, you see now, verse 8, heal the sick. It's a command. He wouldn't command you to do what you could not do. You can. Amen. You will. Amen. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils freely. Ye have received freely give. Hey, look at Mark chapter 3. In Mark chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 14. Mark chapter 3, verse 14. And your day 12, that they should be with him. They should be with him. Understand? If you are with Jesus Christ and he is with you, even the presence of Christ in your life will activate the anointing inside you. Amen. You are with the fire and the fire is with you. Cold will vanish away. You are with the water, and the water is with you. Dryness will vanish away. Those unbelievers, they made a great mistake. They thought they defeated the children of Israel, and they took the ark of the covenant. And they took the ark of the covenant, and they put it in their temple. And their idol was there. The following morning, no priest there, no high priest there, just the ark, and their idol fell down. The very fact that he brought those disciples that they should be with him, his presence will crush every evil power in your life in Jesus' name. <laughs> And so the people didn't understand that this is supernatural art. So they set up their idol again. The following day, the head of the idol cut off. The hands cut off. The feet cut off. And they never stepped into that temple of idol anymore. So Jesus does everything symbolically meaningfully and he said that they will be with him be with the lord and let the lord be with you every time your anointing will keep on flowing yeah. even when you don't open your mouth to say in the name of jesus come out because you carry jesus because you carry the redeemer because you carry the revivalist in your heart everywhere you go the fire of revival will be burning everywhere <laughs> and everywhere i go that fire of revival will burn in jesus name here i am with you I carried Jesus in my heart as I came. Amen. And our interaction together, our fellowship together will activate. It's been there, it's been there. You have the anointing, initial anointing. It's been there. That presence and this interaction will activate something in your heart that had been dormant before. Everywhere you go now, lay that hand on the sick. They will recover. Yeah. I said they will recover. Yeah. And so he tells us that your day in toil, that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, and it says, and to have power. That's why he brought them near. That's why he brought you here. To have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. Look at um, Luke chapter 10. We're reading from verse 1. Luke chapter 10. We're reading here from verse 1. It says, after these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also. This one not part of the 12. Other 70 also. This one not in the original team. The apostles he appointed 
other 70 also. And then he tells us, and he sent them two and two before his face into every city and every place whither he himself would come. He sent them into every place whither he himself will come. When he sends you out, he says, go ahead and follow him. I am coming. If you fail, don't give up. I'll be coming, and then I will do what you failed at doing. Isn't it wonderful that as a sense of, it doesn't leave us alone? And whatever confronts you, and whatever you confront, he will come. He will supply everything that needs to be supplied in your ministry. Uh, uh, look at that here, now in verse 9. In verse 9, it says, And heal the sick that are therein. And remember, he didn't qualify, he didn't explain about the sick, whatever they have, cancer. Don't listen to those who say, no, cancer is gone beyond. Listen to Christ who set you. And blindness, oh, don't say, you know, I know the biological reasons why they have that weakness. Uh -huh. Glaucoma, uh -huh. he didn't give you any name. He just said the blind heal them. Whatever the reason, they are healed in Jesus' name. And say unto them, the kingdom of God is come unto you. Amen. The kingdom of God. There's power in that kingdom. Amen. There's the spirit of God activating that kingdom. There is healing and there is solution to every problem in that kingdom. Just tell them the kingdom of God is come unto you. And they went, they went with that word. What, do, what did he give them? He didn't give them oil. He didn't give them candle. He didn't give them incense. He didn't give them anything. Just the word. And the weight of the word that he gave them. We're not giving you anything. You know, sometimes I go somewhere and, uh, you know, they tell our overseer, I want to see the pastor. I want to see the pastor. They have a bottle of water inside their pocket. And then, okay, eventually they see me. And then, instead of talking, they just stretch out the bottle of water. <laughs> I say, you want me to drink? He said, no, no. Lay your hand on the bottle of water. I say, no, I'll lay my hands on you. Isn't it better to lay hands on you than on your bottle of water? And you go with the word. We don't go with the water. We don't go with the oil. Go with that word he has given you. Mighty things will happen. Yeah. Look at verse 17. Verse 17, it says, And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Not through the water, not through the candle, not through the incense, and not through the oil. The devils, even the devils, are subject unto us through thy name. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan. As we are going out, as we are marching out, as we are, you know, walking by faith and walking in the faith and doing the work of the Lord, even Satan noticed your presence. Amen. We are going to go through the legs and the breath and all the places in this stage. And the devil will recognize they have come. Amen. The only people that have the name, the only people that have the power, they have come. 
and you will not be saying, ah, I came to this village, I came to these people, and they have come, meaning uh, the evil powers, they have come, they will not allow me to sleep. Nobody will take a minute out of your sleep. <laughs> Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, and behold, I give unto you. Uh, he had given them power at the beginning. That's why he said, go tell them, heal the sick. He had told them, anywhere you go, preach the kingdom of God. That the initial anointing, initial power. Now, after they've come and gone back, he said, I give unto you, tell me, say it as if you are the only one in the heart, to tread on serpents and scorpions. Serpents and scorpions will not walk over my body. Yourself, yourself, yourself. Serpents, cockroaches, spiritual lizards, Scorpion will not walk over my body. I give you power over all the power of the enemy. Now, the enemy there. It doesn't tell us whether it's enemy with capital letter, enemy or capital, enemy or spiritual, enemy satanic, Enemy diabolical, enemy traditional, enemy, any enemy, they are crushed under your feet. <laughs> Go with the word. It's the word that he has given us. And he said, Behold, stop. Look at it, gaze at it, think of it, meditate on this that I give you power over. All the serpents, all the scorpions, over all the power of the enemy, and nothing, and nothing, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. No matter their means, no matter their method, no matter all the rigmarole thing, no matter their sacrifice, no matter their incantation, you have all the power over all enemies, and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. <laughs> you know, somebody says, a young girl, teenager, got converted. And that teenager that got converted started preaching to the parents. The parents were not happy. And so the parents employed a great, great herbalist and, you know, those people that they can do anything. And they said, this girl, this is her daughter, get Christ out of her. And so the herbalist and this voodoo doctor began to try. And a girl, teenager, said, Sir, you can't do what they told you to do. This is impossible. Christ lives on the inside of me, and nothing you do will take Christ away from me. And uh, so he tried and tried and tried, no way. And he himself now became sick. And the sickness, I mean, since he was himself a witch doctor, he went to other witch doctors that they thought could do anything, the sickness was increasing. And this girl went to the man and said, Sir, I pity your condition. Can I take you to our pastor? He'll pray for you. Shut up. <laughs> so the girl shut up. And the sickness was increasing and the girl came back and said sir don't die like this i can take you to a pastor you will become what shut up and then 
eventually. As the sickness wanted to take his life, he swallowed his pride. And the girl came and he said, okay, don't say anything. I know what you'll come to say. Take me there. <laughs> and so eventually, they came. And they were all there, you know, crowd, crowd, inside, outside, everywhere. And I was, you know, preaching, preaching, preaching. And then after the preaching, I said, we're going to pray now. I said, the girl had not come to me, had not even met the girl before. She was just taking the word everywhere she went. And I said, there's a man there, you're a herbalist, and you've been told to beat Christ out of a believer. And there you are, you're sick, and you're here. You're about dying. I said, wherever you are, raise up your hand. I saw some people in the hall, uh, you know, because they didn't hear the host radio. So I said, no, I'm waiting for the man. And the man out there, outside the wall, because before they came, the hall was filled up. I said, that's the man, that's the man. And then I said, in the name of Jesus, all that sickness come out in Jesus' name. And the man got well. And then all his voodoo and everything, he packed everything away and he bought everything. And we baptized him in water. And he became a member of the church. No more fighting believers, but himself fellowshipping were believers. That's why we come. That the anointing that has been present all along will be activated in your life, in your ministry, in Jesus' name. And so Jesus said, Behold, I give you power over power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. We're coming to point number two. Point number two, increased anointing for servanthood. Anything we get, we should expect it will increase. When I started schooling, initially I had a bit of knowledge, but I didn't stop. Then I went on. Then I increased in knowledge, and I increased in the use of that knowledge. Knowledge and practical knowledge applied wisdom. I increased in the confidence what, you know, when I at the initial, initial um, knowledge, it is say seven times one, seven, seven times two, fourteen, seven times nine, because they jumped from seven times two, and they didn't go to seven times three for me to follow gradually, and they just jumped to seven times seven, nine, I'll be, you know, shaking my head. What, it, what is it? What is it? Because it was only initial knowledge. And as I went on and went on, anytime now, even at this age, ask me. <laughs> Seven times nine. Tell me, tell me. Uh -huh. We increase in knowledge. We increase in wisdom. When I first became a Christian, born again, and they say, Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, and while the person asking, you know, Benson said, I'll be opening to see if I can see, but now you ask me, Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, oh, I just say, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Ah, Matthew chapter 5, verse 20. Except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will know what get to the kingdom of God. Now, because I didn't stay at the low level, increase upon your life. Increase in your ministry. There is increased anointing 
for servanthood. You will increase. Power will increase. Authority will increase. Assurance will increase in your life. In 2 Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2. I'm reading here from verse 2. Here is the story of Elisha. When Elijah met him, he threw the mantle on him. And he understood initial anointing. And then he got everything set up and he followed Elijah. You know what he was doing? He was pouring water on the hand of Elijah. Elijah. That's all he did with the initial anointing. He believed in God. He believed in that prophet. And he followed him just washing his son. But now increased anointing was going to come. Amen. This is your day. Amen. The spirit like it moved um, something in the camp from this when, we, when you live here and you see them on the street paralyzed something will tell you that's where why you have increased anointing. Go raise him up there. Amen. And you rise up and walk and as that happens, the people, they'll gather together, they'll make a crowd, and then they won't allow you to go. You will preach the gospel to them. In 2 Kings chapter 2, I'm looking at verse 2. And Elijah said unto Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. And when you make up your mind, whatever happens, this that we read from the Bible, this anointing I will have. You will have. You will have. Eventually, as they went on, you know the story. You know, the Lord has sent me to Jordan. Stay here. I'm going with you. And the Lord has sent me there. I'm going with you. When you will not separate yourself from the anointing carrier, you also will carry the anointing. Yeah. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, here, Elijah was now seen, and it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I'm take, I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, Tell me. Let a double portion of thy spirit be, be, be. There were 50 sons of the prophets, Bethel, 50 sons of the prophet, Gilgal, 50 sons of the prophet, by Jordan, 150. And he, Elisha, one person. He didn't say that a double portion of your anointing be upon us, himself, yourself. <laughs> think about it, think about it. And this Elisha did much more than all the 150 sons of the prophets. The knowledge of prophecy. The Lord is going to take your master away from your head today. They had the understanding that God, in, they believed in God. They believed the thing that was going to happen to Elijah. But they were just there, just there. But this man, one man, that made up his mind and he said, what I see, what I hear, will not be for nothing. I'm going to have not just a spirit, I will have a double portion. You will have a double portion. 
But you know, it's not just give me a double portion. I want a double portion. We can tell when that anointing, when that double portion came, the first evidence, it was not going back. And then River Jordan had closed up and he took that mantle. And he said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Wrap the mantle together and beat on that water. And the water parted for him. <laughs> the first thing that happens in your life, after you pray for that initial anointing, activated anointing, increased anointing, the first thing that happens is a symbol, is an evidence, you got it. And then after that, that same chapter 2, where he got the double portion. Now, when he gets the double, when he got the double portion, he didn't feel taller. It's not feeling. He didn't feel fatter. It's not feeling. He didn't even feel, you know, any emotion that he had not felt before. But yeah, the fact, that's what I asked for. And the condition is, if you see me, by the time I go, it will be so. And I saw him, and then I saw the chariots that came to carry him. And then I know, as I go to the river, and I say, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And I smite that Jordan, it parts in two. Praise God, I have got it. <laughs> Praise God, I have got it. If you don't smite that Jordan, if you don't see that Jordan divide into two, how will you know your God? So activate that thing and make that thing work. Pray for the sick. Do what you have not been able to do before. What happens? Well, tell you the story. You have that anointing. Yeah. And they said the situation of this city is good, but the water is not, and the land is barren. And immediately the word of wisdom of the spirit came to him, bring me a cruise and put oil there, and went to the source of that water. And he poured it. Then prophecy came on him, and he said, There will be no barrenness anymore, and there will be no sterility anymore. And it was so. And it will be so in your life. And this woman came and said that I am the wife of a prophet, but he's gone. And I have these two sons, and the creditors now come, and I want to take my sons because I cannot pay. What do you have at home? And he said, I have, I, he said, first of all, I have nothing, but you have something. Yeah. I said, you have something. Yeah. And he said, I have just a little oil. All right, that's enough. Go borrow vessels, not a few, and then lock up for yourself in the chamber and pour out and pour out. And she obeyed that, and as she was pouring, the oil was increasing. Yeah. Pouring, the oil was increasing. Yeah. You know, people that say, I won't preach too much. Because if I preach too much, the virtue that goes out, if it does not come back, then I don't have anything. So I'm still going to preach next week in that place, next month in that place. So I'll not pour everything out now. What a great mistake in your life. As she kept pouring and pouring, then it was increasing. Only when the pots finished, then the oil finished. When there's no more congregation, when there's no program, when there's no event, when there's nobody, when there's no congregation to pour and pour and pour, the anointing will stop. But if you keep on pouring, it will keep on coming. If you keep on pouring, it will keep on walking. And here is a woman now, and she had a child by the power of God and the proclamation of Elisha. Here is the proof he had the double anointing. And eventually, eventually, when he said, by this time next year, you'll have a baby. Oh, man of God, don't lie unto me. But men of God, when they prophesy, they don't lie. Do we lie? 
and eventually that woman had a child. But one day, the child died, and the woman was sorrowful. And she told the husband, I want to go to the prophet of God. Why? Today is not, you know, Sabbath day, festival day. You just give me the one that will drive. And then when she got on that uh, animal that he said, don't, don't listen, just rush, just run. Let me get there. And as he was coming, she was coming. Elijah saw him. He said, yes, uh, go ask. What's the matter? What's the problem? Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? Oh, she could have been crying. Is it well with the child? You don't know what has happened. The child is gone. It is well. With you today, is it well? With the children, is it well? And she got to the man of God. And when she got to the man of God, she narrated the story. And the man of God said, yes, I, yes, I had the rod. But he didn't have the faith. He didn't have the unction. He didn't have the anointing. And the rod did nothing. And then he got there. And when he got there, to cut a long story short, the boy got back to life. <laughs> Everywhere you go, with this increased anointing, you'll bring life there in Jesus' name. Here comes Naaman, the captain of the soldier of the army of the Syrians, and he was a leper. Eventually, you know the story, and uh, you know, Naaman got there with all his um, entourage and whatever, and he sent him, Messiah, go wash in Jordan, and your flesh will come back. Leprosy will be healed. And of course, you know, the story was again and again, argument never brings miracle. Reasoning with the head and not a banner and fapa better than all the rivers of Israel that never brings me. And the servants came, sir, please do what the man of God has said. And he went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The flesh came back. <laughs> you see, the anointing had been increased. And he had a double anointing. And um, Neiman said, get this, get, no, anointing is not for sale. Spiritual power is not for sale. The ministry of the prophet is not for sale. You can go. And uh, so he went and uh, Gehazi, the servant, said, <laughs> what's my master looking at? We need money now. We need money to buy this, buy this, and buy this. And he knows only prayer, prayer, only preaching, preaching, no money. And so he went and got what he got, you know, the story, and came back and hid the thing. And Elisha said, Yes, I, where have you been? Oh, I've always been here. Did you need my attention? I went no whither. Did not my heart go with you when you followed that man? And when you got what you got, the anointing in your life will not be blind. Yeah. You know, people around you, people, they do this, they do that. And if you ask them question, they tell you what they think you want to hear. But when you have the anointing, anointing comes with revelation. There will be revelation in your ministry. Yeah. Revelation in your church. Amen. Amen. You know, without that kind of revelation, you, you will not be able to prove there is a new anointing. Come back to Elisha. Eventually, Elisha was about to die. And just before he died, now, the anointing on him had increased beyond just normal increase. Now came immeasurable. And eventually Elijah died. And they put him in the grave. But they had not fully cemented everything. 
uh, you know, those days, they'll dog the grave, they'll put the dead body inside, they'll put wood to, you know, so that people will not come and take the dead body away. And eventually, somebody died. And they were going to bury the fellow. And the people going to bury that fellow, they saw a band coming. And very quickly, they dropped the dead body inside Elisha's grave. What happened? <laughs> I said, what happened? <laughs> it rose up from the dead. Even the dead bones of Elisha. Can I tell you why? As you look at all the miracles that Elijah did, number them. And you look at all the miracles that Elisha performed, it remained one to make it double of Elijah's miracle. Those who count, some have counted eight spectacular miracles. And then they have counted 15 spectacular miracles by Elisha. But eight, eight multiplied by two is what? And before his death, we can only count 15 spectacular. And it remained one. Even after he died, that missing one was now fulfilled. <laughs> 16. And so, as we come to the Lord, there is initial anointing. There is increased anointing now, immeasurable. Look at point number three. Number three, immeasurable anointing for service. You will get your own. Yeah. First Corinthians chapter 12. Look at verse 7. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man. Tell me, every man. Every man. Every man. Every man. Actually, 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 uh, the Bible will not say every man and woman, but everybody, everyone. It could have said to everyone, sisters, you have your own. Mothers in Israel, you have your own. I don't have the time, Deborah. Add her own, you will have your own. Anna, add her own, you will have your own. Sarah, add her own, you will have your own. Elizabeth, add her own, you will have your own. Ruth, add her own you will have your own. Mary, at her own, you will have your own. Mary and Martha, at their own, you will have your own. But, 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 you take away the stone. And Martha said, Lord, it's been dead for four days, and he stinks by now. And Jesus said, didn't I tell you, Martha, that if you believe, you will see the glory of God. And he took away the stone. Wants to take away the stone. Wants to take away the stumbling block. Wants to take away all that, all that stumbling stone. And the sin, you put a stone. On your line, you said, it's dead. After all, I'm a woman. That thing is dead. That thing is gone. We've lost him. We've lost it. And you put a stone there. You say, bye-bye. But the stone of limitation you put upon your life, if you take that stone away, you will see the glory of God. <laughs> Mary and Martha at their own you will have your own. Yeah. Men, you'll have your own. Yeah. Look at Joseph. 
you'll have your own. Yeah. Look at Moses that spoke face to face with God. You will have your own. Yeah. Look at Joshua that said, Son, I'm busy here. I need the light of the sun. Son, stand there and stood there. Joshua had his own. You will have your own. Yeah. David had his own. This Goliath, this lion, this bear, threatening the commonwealth of Israel. He came out and he said, I'll bring him down. All the things that challenge the church of the living God, you are now the appointed one. Yeah. You are now the assigned one. And you are now the anointed one. Yeah. And he came and he brought him down. David at his own. And then Daniel at his sword. I will have my own. I, I cannot come into this life and see other people. They have the anointing by the grace of God. Not seeing the deed that I have not done. They surrendered their lives. I surrendered my lives. They supplicated. They prayed. I supplicate. I pray. I desire. They desired. And I desire. And then they went out for the Lord. I go out for the Lord. They had their own. I must have my own. Shadrach. Meshach and Abednego at their own. They are not here. I am here. I must have my own. Peter at his own. You will have your own. Yeah. Philip went to Samaria and he had his own. I must have my own. And it is by the Spirit of God. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, it tells us, it says, For the one is given by the Spirit, the word of wisdom. Lord, I receive that. <laughs> to another, the word of knowledge by the Spirit, by the same Spirit, Lord, I receive. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, to another, Faith by the same Spirit, Lord, today I receive my own. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, Lord, thank you, I have my own. And then in verse 10, to another, the working of miracles. Lord, I'm a candidate for that. I receive my own. And then to another prophecy, and to another the discerning of spirit, and to another diverse different kinds of tongues, and to another interpretation of tongues. Lord, I receive. Lord, I receive. In verse 11, it says, but all these walketh by that one and self same spirit, dividing to every man, every one, every person, dividing to everyone severally as he will. I receive. I, receive. I believe. I believe. <clears throat> A new anointing. A greater anointing. It is done. What are you? It is done. What are you? It is done. Rise up and tell the Lord, done. 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 I receive. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord. The initial anointing is waiting for everyone. Initial power. Initial authority. Bring your vessels, not a few. Anointing that breaks every yoke. Any yoke in your life? Broken. 
any power that has followed you every day, hindering you, limiting you, stopping you, and you never bring any building to a conclusion. The yoke is broken. Power in your soul. Power in your spirit. The power that activates whatever is dormant in your life. Power, anointing. Moses, immeasurable anointing. Joshua, immeasurable anointing. David, immeasurable anointing. Daniel, immeasurable anointing. Submit unto the Lord. Surrender everything, all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your personality, all of who you are. Come to the Lord in total absolute surrender and let him give you initial increasing immeasurable anointing he will he will he will the faithful God and when they receive the anointing they made use of the anointing. It's what they did. It's how they preached. In the places they went that became, that made it evident, they had a new anointing. Where are you going, where are you going after this session? What are you going to do after this session? I'm going to continue the same way as it was yesterday and today and so will it ever be? Come on, rise up, go higher and do what you have never been able to do before because the new anointing brings a new day. A new anointing brings a new opportunity to go forth and do a new thing that you never did in your life. In Jesus' name we pray. I believe. He that believeth on him. The works he did, you will do. Yeah. And greater works than these will you do. Yeah. Because our Savior, because our supplier, because our shepherd, because the one that conquered for us, because he is what the Father. Amen. The anointing of the Lord has come upon you already. He answers prayer. He cannot deny you. He did not deny Elisha. He did not deny Joseph. He did not deny Deborah. He did not deny Sarah. He will not deny you. A new child will be born in your ministry. A new, new miracle level will come through your life. As you carry that 
new baby, new miracle, new power, new anointing. Take care of that baby. Hold on to that baby. Nourish that baby. You and this new baby, you will penetrate every community you go to in Jesus' name. I know you are anointed already. Raise up that hand. Let me anoint that hand afresh. And you're careful with what you do, what you touch with that hand. If you carry that anointing on that hand, you lay these hands on the sick and they shall recover. If you watch what you say with your mouth, you tell evil spirits, come out. They will come out. Everywhere you go, the Lord will go with you. When you sit, when you sit where you sit, miracle of healing will come to you. When the people who follow you, that the Lord has given you to follow you, and you walk and walk, or you put your foot, they put their foot, every yoke in their lives will be broken. Lift up that hand, Father, in Jesus' name. I pray for every brother there, another Joseph, another Moses, another Joshua, another Caleb, another Philip, another Paul. Transfer the anointing upon everyone in Jesus' name. I pray for every sister, every daughter, every mother in Israel. Another Esther. Another Elizabeth. Another Mary. Another Massa and Mary. Lord, I pray as we take up the stone, supernatural power will penetrate your life. Lord, as we go out here, do something spectacular. In the life, in the ministry, in the family of everyone, that we will know we have a new anointing. If your wife is sick, when you get back home, lay this anointed hand on her. She'll be sound and well. If your husband is sick, your child is sick, this anointing now, really on you and on your hand, lay that anointing, anointed hand on your husband, yeah. on your children. Yeah. They will get up in Jesus' name. Yeah. You've got something. Already you have it in your spirit. Yeah. You know it in your heart. Yeah. Behold, he has given you power yeah. to tread on serpents and scorpions. Yeah. He has given you power over all the powers of the enemy. And now, where you stand, where you walk, where you go, the village you go, the town you go, the church you are ministering in, where you were afraid before, go. Carry the spirit of the conqueror. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Go. 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 Where you failed before, now you will succeed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name,
them we pray.
Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you and bless your name because you are ready for every one of us. And Lord, I pray that this great anointing, this profitable anointing, this wonderful